Look, who just sent me a text? Addie McAllister? What should I say? Just play it cool. Welcome to the world inside your phone, where everyone is expected to act one way their whole life. Aw, snap! Ow. My name is Gene, and I'm supposed to be a meh. You know, like, meh, who cares? But my problem is, I have more than one emotion. Check this out. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Son, please tell me you weren't laughing just now. What if you get sent out on the phone making the wrong face? Dan, I'll make the right face. Then I would finally fit in. Sweetie, you're so handsome when you make that face. I think he's ready now. Meh. That's our user, Alex. We have an incoming text. We are go for men. Who, <laughs> me? <laughs> What's he doing? He's making the wrong face. <laughs> What the heck? Welcome to the Loser Lounge, where the emojis who never get used hang out. What's up, High Five? <laughs> I'm an emoji. I gotta have some sort of purpose here. I'm gonna help you. We need to get off the phone and find the source code. Then I can fit in. Let's roll, my Felicia. <laughs> First, we have to get through this firewall. <laughs> What's Alex's girlfriend's name again? It was Tina. Access denied. Karen. Sarah. I want to say Lupita, but that doesn't feel right now. I'm saying it out loud. I think you're pretty cool just the way you are. Nobody leaves the phone! Delete them! My feelings are huge. Maybe I'm meant to have more than just one emotion. Where am I? Candy Crush. Divine, sweet, tasty, delicious. Oh, never eating another piece of candy ever again. High five, don't do it. Don't you do it. It's already been in there once. <sighs> okay, son, what do we do after we go potty? Should we wash our hands? <laughs> We're, We're number, number two. Jeremy, I, I feel like I have to say first and foremost, looking good with that poop slash soft serve <laughs> emoji on your shirt. What definitely it's poo, but this is quite a soft serve looking version of the poo. It's I also think. quite pleased looking soft serve version looking of that poo, which I think is very, I don't know, pleasant. It's, it's a nice way to kick off the day. I think it's nice. I want to say to you and to everyone in the audience and watching at home, happy world emoji day. Happy world emoji day, everybody. Did you, did you ever think that would be a thing? I didn't think it would be a thing like we're sitting here and you guys are all here. I, d I didn't think it would be a real world thing. I thought it would be something fun to do online. So I feel like since you are the founder of Emojipedia, you're on the Unicode subcommittee for Emoji, you're probably the best person to ask, where did Emoji come from? Give us the backstory. So the backstory, not to drag you through every technical detail, but there was sort of a hack on Japanese phones years ago where they were pretty basic sort of flip phones and someone came up with the idea that, oh, we can, we can fit these extra little characters in text messages. And what happened is that Google wanted to take Gmail to Japan and the Jap Japanese market, they, they said, look, we're not going to do Gmail unless emojis work in Gmail. And they weren't going to work because that was sort of this Japanese-only thing and they wouldn't work. So Google went to Unicode, the standards body, and they said, look, we just need to make this happen. Got Apple on board. And then next thing we know, we we'll all got them on our own phones because of Gmail going to Japan. Because of that, because of those, I think, distinctly Japanese origins, is that basically explain why we have so many weird emoji like ramen and tempura and now zombies and elf? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't blame Japan for the zombies and elves of this year. That's, <laughs> that's past Japan. But people always complain to me about the 12 trains. I always get, why are there 12 trains and there isn't a redhead? I see a few redheads around the room. <laughs> So, yeah, and they're because of, they're because of Japan. That, uh, they were used for train timetables a lot and the weather. So you see a lot of those sort of Japanese influence. And Japanese foods and map markers. There's the, the red one with sort of wavy lines above it. Yeah, what is that? Well, it's for like an onsen or hot springs in Japan. Right. Yes. They put it on a map. Super, super yeah. applicable to everybody. Exactly. We all use that so well. Uh, so, yeah, you're right. A lot of the, the weird-looking stuff to the rest of us are because they're on the Japanese ones. So just because of these slightly out there origins. I, I mean, that's where I kind of find it really interesting about these. But as the founder of Emojipedia, at what point did you sort of look at these and say, oh, this is something I basically have to devote my life to now? 
<laughs> <laughs> you know what happened? I got to be honest that when I started Emojipedia, I don't think I realized that they look different on other phones. Really? So I started it thinking, I can finish this. Like it'll be a project. I'll write about every emoji. There hadn't been new ones at that stage. We just had the original set. And I thought, what a fun project. I'll just set up a website. I'll talk about every emoji and then it will be done. And then <laughs> a little while later, I realized, oh, look, they look different on this phone and on this phone. So we've really got to add pictures for those. And then there started being new emojis. And then every phone started changing what they look like every year. And about a year or so in, I just went, I've just got to quit my job. And this is my life now. <laughs> <laughs> so you quit your job. Was there, was there a single moment or an instance where you sort of realized, yes, emoji aren't just this like weird Japanese set of characters. It's really translated that and become kind of a cultural touch point. When I first realized that people cared, I mean, I'd been writing on Emojipedia for about eight months and nobody cared. I mean, <laughs> like it was literally just me and whoever the other two people that showed, showed up in our visitor logs were. I don't know who they were. Um, what happened, I was on holiday about eight months later and my phone started blowing up with messages and the site had gone down and all this sort of thing. And what I'd realized is I'd published this list of new emojis coming out in mm -hmm. 2014. It had been available for months. It had been listed on this Unicode website buried somewhere and again nobody cared so I published this list and nobody cared and then two or three months later someone found it and they pointed to it and said hey look Emojipedia has the list of new emojis and the world lost their minds they <laughs> and I think from that moment I realized oh like people really want to know what's coming next and this makes a big difference so essentially overnight you became the lord of the emoji it, it, yeah, you could say that. I was. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say that, but I'll let you say that. Well, how would you how would you sort of describe the relevance that you now sort of hold in the emoji community? Because it's not nothing. It's not nothing. No. Uh, I guess what what happens is that people really love Apple's emojis, but mm -hmm. Apple doesn't want to come out here. No offense, but they don't come out and talk about their emojis. You know, they Fair they enough, yeah. they they did release a press release today about their new emoji designs coming out, but they don't tend to be available to chat about them and. I guess I'm here just uh, analyzing every emoji that exists and, and that's fun for me and I hope other people like it too. So in addition to being the founder of Emoji PD, as I mentioned, you are also a member of the Emoji Subcommittee at the Unicode Consortium. Can you tell us a bit about what that body actually does? So Unicode has been around for 25 years now and really, I mean, before Emoji, their job was kind of dry, just making sure that when you write a document and it's in Chinese or Russian or Japanese, that it doesn't look like empty boxes when you send it to another, to another place around the world. Because Emoji became part of the standard, now they're involved. So really, Unicode is a group that is just sort of the people that it's a, it's a body that makes up Apple and Google and Microsoft and, Tw <clears throat> Microsoft and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And they have to get together, including myself, and talk about every new emoji proposal so that we can agree on it before it happens. And that's a thing that I was not very clear on prior to getting prepped for this interview. So emoji proposals are a thing. People sort of submit ideas for them. And who decides? Is it your subcommittee, essentially, that gets to pick and choose what goes into the new release? So at Unicode, there is the emoji subcommittee, which I'm a member of. We look at every new proposal that comes in that comes in. We're kind of the admin department though. <laughs> I mean, we do talk about what comes in, but really what, what the emoji subcommittee's job is, is to chuck out any proposals that are just a drawing that somebody drew on a bit of paper and sent in, uh, and to, to pass on any real proposals to the technical committee, which is the next tier that actually mm -hmm. meets in person every quarter to really put the rubber stamp on which emojis are gonna exist. So it sounds very, I don't know, almost corporate the way and a proposal becomes this thing that we have on our phones that we send to people constantly. So can you shed a little more light on the process of how my idea that isn't total garbage maybe becomes an emoji someday? So redheads are a good example. The redheads have been discussed for about two and a half years now, and they might, not definitely, but they might be happening next year. Uh, so the process for the redhead emoji is that Unicode officially doesn't have any stance on hair color right now. Mm -hmm. They just say, here's the skin tones and it's up to the company. Does Apple want to make the dark skin tone have dark hair? Maybe. So then Unicode has to change their policies to say, now do we have an opinion on hair color? And if we do, which hair colors do we add? Do we add blue and pink and purple? And is there data to back everything up? So 
really the process involves gathering more and more data, getting the vendors on board to agree that they all want to support it, and then finally approving the list and then getting it on our phones. And it's, I think, fair to say the vendors have kind of an outsized level of influence on how these things look. Unicode kind of gives them a broad sort of understanding of what an emoji should be, but an art department is ultimately up to deciding what an emoji looks like, right? Right. I mean, like, you see fonts where the letter A looks different in every font. An emoji character, the smiley face, can look different on every platform. Apple famously changed their gun to look like a water pistol, and... That's only on their platform. So if I send that to someone else and be like, hey, you want to you come out to the park and bring this? And you send a water pistol, <laughs> everybody else gets the gun. And that's Apple's pro like, That's their call to make. If they want to do that on their, on their platform, they can. But really, Unicode doesn't dictate what happens. They say, here's the emoji. You need to have this emoji set. And then it's up to the vendors how they design it. Well, I think the fact that these companies and not the consortium are the ones that decide what an emoji actually gets to look like leads to some pretty wild variances. As you pointed out, the gun's a great example. Uh, Apple recently, well, maybe not recently, but they had the peach slash butt issue where <laughs> they changed the peach to look less like a butt and now it's more like a butt again. That resonated more than anything you've said so far. Everyone went, oh, <laughs> the, the peach butt, yes. <laughs> yeah, the peach butt controversy <laughs> is a real thing. But, uh, I mean, do any of them stand out to you in particular? So what, what often happens is that, as you say, the peach bot, for anyone that wasn't aware, which it sounds like everybody was, <laughs> but that Apple has an emoji that looks like a peach and also a bit like a butt, and they changed it to look more like a peach, and then everybody hated it and said, no, you need to change it back. You need to make it keep looking like a butt. <laughs> uh, we did an analysis of that and found only 7% of people that send the peach are using it to mean the fruit. Uh, I'm shocked. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so there's other examples, though. Samsung, if anyone has a Samsung Galaxy, they might find that some of their, their emojis look a bit different. Cookie Monster messaged the other day. You sent out a tweet saying, Happy World Chocolate Day, and included the cookie emoji. But on a Samsung phone, it looks like a saltine cracker. <laughs> <laughs> That's slightly tragic. Yeah, we felt bad for Samsung for that. And, then, <laughs> and there's also the rolling eyes emoji that looks kind of, you know board over it on every platform except Samsung, which looks really happy. It kind of looks off to the side wistfully, and we've heard that's nearly caused breakups from people where you send, <laughs> you send an, that emoji to, to your, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, and yeah, they're not going to be happy. What I find really fascinating about emoji, aside from the fact that they kind of exist at all, is that they've sort of taken on different roles to different people. So some would contend that you could send a string of emoji to a person and have that read as a completely comprehensible message. Other people would argue that it's really just kind of meant to modify a message. So if I send a text to my girlfriend and send a, like a winky face, I'm not actually upset. I'm just kind of giving her guff. Where do you stand on that? Yeah, I mean, you have to have an understanding of what an emoji means before you can use it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we use them in different ways. That if you're tweeting to the world, you kind of go with a safer set. You, you use the ones that everybody agrees means this, the smiley face, the heart eyes. They're hard to misinterpret. But if you're messaging your friends or someone you know well, you can come up with an alternate meaning, a, an in-joke that this emoji means something else entirely, or that you just kind of come up with your own, your own process for that. And different countries have different feelings about emojis as well. So they're... They're not as universal as people think. They, they don't have just one meaning. It depends on who you're messaging and where they are. So the role of emoji is, in a lot of ways, more culturally compartmentalized than some people would give it credit for. Yeah, I mean, hand gestures vary by country wildly. China, they use the, the waving emoji very frequently as quite an offensive, see you later, I don't want to see you again. <laughs> uh, whereas that, I've never seen that connotation in, in the US or the UK. So I'm not asking you to speak for Unicode at large here, but I am sort of curious. We're seeing more and more emoji added to the, to the body of emoji every year. I think with uh, Emoji 5, the release for this year, we're about 70, 69 maybe, a new emoji added to the list. Right. With some weird ones, as I pointed out, including zombies and merpeople and a vampire and I think a swearing mouth guy. Um, what, what is the goal? Is it to kind of give people the ability to express kind of everything through a pictorial? Or is it just, hey, people want cool, funny things to send to their friends. Let's give them more of those. I mean, Unicode said that the vendors have expressed an interest in having about 70 to 100 a year. They don't want to do too many because it takes a lot of work. That You've got to get the graphics ready. Everyone gets annoyed when you add too many to the keyboard and you can't find them. 
but it's a it's a high profile issue for vendors that people if you own a phone you're going to send feedback in saying hey why don't I have my own emoji here and Apple and Google and Microsoft they want to they want to make their users happy so I think the really the driver is the vendors wanting to make their their users happy as opposed to Unicode itself saying we just want to keep doing this forever. Gotcha. So there is really no such thing as a theoretically complete list of emoji. Some people try. There are very dedicated lists on the internet some will, that will compile every emoji and everything else that's missing. Uh, animal genders, there's a whole proposal around why isn't there a male and female lion and a male and female of every, uh, giraffe and zebra. And, you know, the, if we completed every emoji set, if it, then we'd have millions. We'd just be replicating the universe on our emoji keyboard. So that, we, we can't do that. I really I want to bring this to the movie because I have so many questions about this, but I, I want to start very broadly. I don't know, like, isn't it kind of weird that emoji, these like little blinky faces on our phones, are now the subject of a feature length film? I don't think so. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, I genuinely think. I mean, it's something that we all use. We all use emoji. We talk about it. We use it, and it seems inevitable that someone is going to make a movie about emojis. I mean. Why wouldn't you? They're, they're something that we all know what they are, and we all have some kind of story to tell with them. So I think if, if Sony wasn't going to do it, then someone else might have done. So I think they were <laughs> making a smart call to get on board. So I'm not sure uh, to what extent you're aware of the plot of the Emoji movie. I myself am not super, super up on it, but... I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to the premiere it. next week, so uh, I'll give you more then. Out of curiosity, if someone were to give you $150 million or whatever amount of money goes into making a movie these days, what, what would you do with that to build an emoji movie of your own, being the expert that you are? I'd love to see some interplay with some of the characters, like the, the sassy girl. I'm not sure if she's in, in this one or not, the girl that does this with her hand. Uh, oh, the, the hair flick? Yeah, the sort of hair flick. I'd yeah, that's like a good to, one. I'd like to see some of that. Maybe some infighting between the eye roll from Apple and Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if the peach butt has a role in this movie. But I feel like the peach fun. butt has to have maybe a starring role. Yeah, I, I think that'd be nice. So I, <laughs> to be honest, I think I'd make a terrible one. I think I'd make a terrible emoji I'm movie. I'm liking your <laughs> ideas so far. Yeah, I don't well, know about you guys, but this sounds pretty, like I'm on board with it. I feel like we're nerds here and we, you know, the, we're, we're getting that. But I, I wonder, I think I'd end up delving too deep into some obscure territory that no one would enjoy very much. <laughs> I, I, we touched on something very briefly earlier that I kind of wanted to circle back to. So you, as a member of the Unicode subcommittee for Emoji, get to spike really, I, I guess, really bad proposals or malformed ones or, or whatever. Does, does one stand out as like a particularly flawed entry in your mind? So the, the most flawed entries never make it public. So what happens is you submit a proposal, and if it m meets a minimum bar, then we pass it on, and then people find out that this was here and this got rejected. Uh, some common ones that often get uh, bumped are real people. People often put in proposals for Madonna. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll just say, oh, I want a Madonna emoji. Starbucks gets a, a lot of mention. People specifically... Brands are getting into this too. Yeah, huh? and it's not just the brands themselves. People seem to genuinely want that, but... Unicode says no, no logos, no copyright. So that's probably a lot of it is the, the copyrighted things that, that fall outside the scope of an emoji. But nothing like terribly weird that just like didn't contextually fit that no one would ever really want to use? No, I find it hard to say any emoji is so bad, <laughs> to be honest, that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in the camp of more emojis are better. We just need a better keyboard to find them all. I want to take uh, the opportunity to thank Jeremy for being here today. Uh, if you're in New York City tonight, the Empire State Building is being lit up yellow in honor of World Emoji Day, so go see that if yeah. you're around. Look up, look up. Thank you for joining us, and I'd like to turn it over to the audience for questions. What's your favorite emoji? I, get, I don't know about you guys, but I get bored of using the same emoji a lot. You use one a lot, and then you kind of get over it. I've been using the rocket a lot recently. I always need a one for yes, and I currently use the rocket as sort of, yeah, lift off. <laughs> <laughs> and I was using the palm tree a lot, but Apple changed what it looked like. It used to look really happy and kind of pointed up, and now it looks kind of droopy, so I don't use the palm tree anymore. Hi there. Uh, on that note, uh, which emoji best describes your personality and why? Oh, that is a good question. Uh, <laughs> the upside down face, I love that one. <laughs> because it doesn't really mean anything. I mean, it kind of, you project your meaning onto it, that you know what you think sort of it means. 
but when you put one there, nobody really knows what you mean, so it gives you a lot of wiggle room. You can say something that you kind of might you might regret later. Put an upside down, and you're like, "No, I was kidding. I was totally kidding." <laughs> Hi. Um, I was just curious, um, if you could be an emoji, which one would you be? If I could be an emoji, which one would I be? I'd probably be the dancing lady. I think she looks like... <laughs> she clearly looks like she's having the most fun of the whole set. If, you, if, there's an, if there's an emoji that has the most fun, it's the dancing lady, probably followed by the two dancing bunny-eared girls. So maybe for practical reasons, I might be one of the bunny ears men because they're, they're new and cool. I like them. All right, that's it from our audience. Jeremy, thank you again so much for joining us today. Jeremy Burge, founder of Emojipedia. Guys, let's give him a big round of applause. Thanks, everyone.